Hello, it's John Heaton, and um, I've had a few requests which I will get round to, uh, to review uh, Early Beatles, Sentimental Journey, and uh, more Pink Floyd. But today, it's going to be a first for my channel, because I'm going to review a Led Zeppelin album. And this is 1979's In Through the Outdoor, the last studio album released by the band before John Bonham died. And uh, if you don't count the, the album Coda, the last album that they released as a band. So um, I'm going to talk quite a bit about the, the music later. But before I do that, I'm going to talk about the sleeve because this album is unique. Uh, by the way, the sleeve design is by Hypnosis, who also did several of the uh, album covers for Pink Floyd, such as Wish You Were Here, uh, Animals. Um, and also they did, they helped for on Back to the Egg and Speed of Sound from Wings. Uh, pretty famous creative team back in the 70s and uh, early 80s. Um, so the, the interesting thing about this album is uh, this barroom picture is uh, there were six different versions of the album which came out all showing a slightly different variant on the, on the picture. So the guy in the in the centre with the hat is burning a, a Dear John letter and uh, each of the six pictures is the view from someone in the bar so this particular one is the view from the, the piano player at the back and on the back cover this is the view from the blonde girl standing at the bar on the front cover here and I uh, did some research on this the six versions and on the sleeve on the spine you can find the letter corresponding to which version so this is version e out of f so a b c d e f and uh, i am glad to say i picked up yesterday an indian pressing which is the c cover which is the view from the barman on the front and the view from the brunette by the jukebox on the back and then in the flea market today for next to nothing i picked up version F, which is the, the view from the brunette on the front and the view from the barman on the back. But there's a couple of subtle differences here. The view, the barman, view from the barman on the back, he's about to, to light the letter. The cigarette lighter is just below the letter. And then on the C cover from India here, the letter is already alight. And there are various other small differences, or you can call them inconsistencies. I think they were probably deliberate. Uh, and, and you know, nice use of humour and just something nice to collect. I've now, I now have four out of six of, of these six uh, versions, and I'll be on the lookout for the other two. I'm going to show you the fourth one, and only show me three. And the other thing which is interesting about this sleeve is this inside picture which I think is more or less the, the view from the guy at the bar so this is he's got his dear John letter and the, the ashtray here and if you apply water to this it goes various colors and uh, I didn't try it on this flea market version but I did try it on my original version and uh, this is the result if you put water on it and some, I read someone said that that might signify the tears of the guy because he's reading his poor dear John letter. That's quite interesting. So, um, I picked up the new 180 gram vinyl. The original album and the reissued album came in this brown paper bag. Very nice. I can't remember whether my copy originally came in that or not. But if it did, I don't have the bag anymore. And you've got to be very careful with this because it can easily get damaged. So this is the, I think this is the A cover. Or maybe it's the B, I don't know. But uh, it's the A cover. <laughs> And I didn't water the inside. I'm not sure if it even works on the reissue. Um, but very nicely packaged here. And 
the the outtakes album, as with all the Led Zeppelin issues, they did a very nice job with the the reissued back catalogue. As with all the the reissues, um, you get a companion disc with bonus material, and uh, I have to say, priced considerably cheaper than the equivalents from uh, Paul McCartney's back catalogue. So that's that. I'm now going to go over the the album. And when this album came out, it kind of dismayed some of the core Led Zeppelin fans because it didn't rock very hard, and uh, some of it was even a bit. What, what you might call kind of silly, like tracks like Hot Dog and... So the core, hardcore fans were dismissive of it at the time. I think time has been quite kind to it and it's now revered as, if not a great album, certainly a solid, solid effort. Uh, the first track in the evening is, is very much the old style Led Zeppelin, you know, what you're used to with the heavy guitar and the superb opening vocal from Robert Plant in the evening. Crashing guitar comes in, coming in from uh, Jimmy Page, drumming from John Bonham. This is John Bonham's last album. He, he was to die the following year, September 1980. And uh, so that track's so far so good. If you're looking for the tra traditional um, Led Zeppelin sound, but then the album goes off into a different slant with Southbound Suarez uh, or Suarez, written by. Uh, John Paul Jones, uh, I think he wrote this with Robert Plant, yeah, and this is one of two tracks on the album with, where Jimmy Page was not a co-writer and that was pretty rare, if, in fact I think it was more or less unprecedented. So it's a kind of bouncy piano number, I like it, um, uh, not brilliant but uh, quite pleasing and John Paul Jones not only was the bass player but he played quite a bit of the keyboards I think so he's responsible for most of this track along with Robert Plant and then you get Fool in the Rain which was a, a single in the US I think it was just outside the top 20 it's got a catchy riff uh, it's a little bit repetitive uh, but a nice guitar solo towards the end from Jimmy and uh, Maybe it overstays its welcome a little bit, but uh, it's pretty, pretty good, enjoyable song. And then side one closes with Hot Dog, which probably horrified some of the Led Zeppelin fans, but I actually find it quite an enjoyable track. It's a kind of fast rockabilly number with jangly uh, honky-tonk piano and some great fast guitar work from Jimmy. Uh, it's not very bluesy, it's not in their usual style, and... Uh, it, I guess it doesn't appeal to everyone, but I, I quite like it. I think it's a good bouncy track and I like the vocals and I like the guitar and the band sound on it. Then we might move on to side two with uh, another keyboard led track called Carousel Lambra. Um, there's some nice guitar work as well in it from Jimmy and uh, maybe it goes on a little too long and it's quite gritty. Um, nothing, nothing great about it, but uh, uh, I've heard a lot worse. It's uh, it's pretty decent. And then we get probably uh, one of the most controversial tracks on the album, "All My Love," uh, which is a kind of sentimental ballad, which uh, was co-written by again Robert Plant and John Paul Jones, and Jimmy Page said he could envisage the fans sort of swaying along to this in concert or some of the fans and he really he said that's really not our style and apparently he'd had conversations with John Bonham already to make a, a rockier album next time out but that they never got around to doing that um, All of My Love features an outstanding vocal from Robert Plant and it's very tuneful and uh, a memorable hook and uh, everything about it is great, other than the fact it doesn't really sound like Led Zeppelin, but if you can forgive it that, it sounds probably more like a Robert Plant solo track, but as it is, it's under the name of Led Zeppelin, because it came out on this album. And uh, credit to, to Robert Plant for pushing it onto the album, because I think it's uh, one of the best tracks on the album. And talking of Led Zeppelin, if you ask me my favourite albums, it would probably be this album, Led Zeppelin 4, and uh, Physical Graffiti, those three. 
and uh, bought the others on the remastered CD and I'm trying to get into them, but the, the others haven't quite grabbed me the same way as those three have. But this one was the one I remember buying at the time it came out, so I probably got a soft spot for it. And then the album finishes with I'm Gonna Crawl, which is a lovely uh, emotional vocal from Robert Plant. Nice use of strings. Again, doesn't sound very much like traditional Led Zeppelin, but uh, none the worse for that, in my opinion. And great vocal, and it's a slow number to close the album in strong fashion. So uh, I think the packaging is outstanding, and I did a video earlier of my top top twenty album covers of all time, and I somehow missed this one because. Uh, I'm really into it at the moment and I'm on the lookout for these missing two versions. So, thank you for watching. See you next time.